Thank you very much. Uh, Paul, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to thank uh, for giving me the opportunity to, um, to share some of our experience in archery in relation to two controversial, controversial pharmacological substances. Uh, so we actually carried out um, two different uh, projects, the World Anti-Doping Agency projects. Very recently we finished. So feel free to uh, tweet this part, but uh, please don't tweet the second part. I, I'm going to mention the, which part. So before I, uh, I start, actually, I would like to ask, how many of you are familiar with archery? Did, did anybody try archery? Dr. Frank, Dr. Gerd, uh, Louis, yes, three, so not many. So that's the reason I would like to start by introducing uh, the instrument. So this is, can I have a, a microphone here, please? This is the bow, just uh, a short introduction. <coughs> so the grip here, the string. Um, these are the balance ropes and the side, side is this part is the arrow shaft. You should have got this bad. Okay, just put it there. Better like this. And um, the, uh, then the site is important at aiming. Uh, we're going to have a demonstration after a while, so we need to have a target. Please choo choose one of uh, the person that uh, you want him to be, to be target. <laughs> okay. Um, I have no uh, actual. Uh, or potential conflict of interest. This is uh, the request from the education department. Um, I'm going to try to give some historical uh, background of archery first, then I shall talk about the characteristics of archery. Um, and I need to do it in order to make you familiar with the details because the research project um, uh, was actually based on this technique and the, the instruments. Um, then uh, I need to give a little bit of information about the performance factors in archery in order to articulate, articulate the core uh, issue, pharmacological substances and their effects. Um, archery in, in, uh, is always uh, is a subject of myth, mythology, and uh, you may also remember the uh, famous archery legend William Tell. Uh, but unfortunately, not every kid is as lucky as William Tell's son. Uh, this is a little bit scary, isn't it? Uh, but no worries, this kid in the picture uh, has survived without any defect afterwards. It's really uh, 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 difficult eh, to, to uh, uh, this one early in the morning. If you look at the historical sources uh, throughout the Stone Ages, uh, archery was probably the most important tool for hunting until 3000 BC. So this was important due to a very simple factor, uh, survival. Not, uh, not the wooden parts, uh, of course, but the stone uh, arrowheads have been found in South Africa dating back 100,000 uh, years ago. So it, it wouldn't be too wrong to say that the archery is probably as old as uh, the, the invention of fire uh, or wheel. Archaeologists have also come across numerous cave drawings in Europe depicting hunting uh, 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 scenes. So around 3000 BC, we start seeing the use of bow and arrow as a um, weapon from Mesopotamia uh, uh, to uh, Mid-Asia, from Americas to China. Hittites, uh, Assyrians, and Egyptians uh, have used bows and arrows uh, in battles. The bows have uh, evolved through the ages, and you can easily differentiate the unique bow shape in different parts of the world. So the Native Americans, medieval uh, bows, Egyptian bows, Asiatic bows, English long uh, uh, bows. The bow and arrow uh, have started losing their value after the invention of uh, firearms, which overtook the archery after 13th century. And only around 17th century, archery again attracted the attention uh, of those who started using bow and arrow for recreational uh, purposes. 
and uh, we see the competition started around 18th century. Archery was an Olympic uh, discipline in 1900s, 1904, 1908, it stopped during the First World War, and again in 1920, then uh, stopped again, and uh, only after uh, 52 years, uh, uh, archery has been in the Olympic program uh, in Munich, 1972. Uh, the international governing body of archery was founded in 1932, and the name was FITA. Uh, FITA, Federa Federation Internationale Tir à l'Arc. So this was changed to World Archery in 2011. Archery, you know, is uh, both a competitive and a recreational activity. Among all these, uh, outdoor archery, uh, outdoor target archery, is the Olympic one. The information I shall be giving uh, here uh, is going to be about the target archery or only. So here you see a, a couple of uh, recreational archery examples I'm going to show you. This is uh, uh, a different technique. Uh, then uh, somebody can do it uh, with the feet. Um, and even, uh, uh, you can see in the circus, but I really doubt uh, how successful would be this lady in the actual uh, archery competition because the distance is 70 meters. But we have to be cautious when mentioning the shoot without hands. There are amazing people in the world who can shoot perfectly uh, without their hands. This is an inspiring short video of Mark Stutzmann who got the silver medal in uh, London Paralympics. So this is a short, amazing, isn't it? It's without hands, he's doing a great job. So there are different competition distances in outdoor uh, archery from 30 to 90 meters and 70 meters is the Olympic one. Um, two days ago I was in Lusail, indoor archery field. I was really impressed. So this is uh, 120 meters indoor uh, archery facility. It's probably the biggest one in the world. There is nothing like this. I've never seen something like this uh, in the world. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to thank Christina, uh, Shooting and Archery Federation uh, Physiotherapist, and Abdulaziz is with us. He's going to demonstrate us uh, some technique uh, uh, after a while. So you see the target face on the right elbow. Um, here is the center. Uh, if you hit this uh, mid uh, yellow, you get 10 points. The next yellow is 9 points. Then the first red is 8 points, and the second red is 7 points, and goes on. So when shooting, um, the archer actually looks to the side on the bow, to the target. The sight uh, helps uh, the archer for aiming. It's a very important tool. The arrow, the string, the, the sight, the target should be in, the li uh, in line. Any deviation from uh, the alignment may lead to a failure in, in shooting. The arrow flies along a parabola but the line of a uh, sight uh, should be straight. So this is a closer look to the sight when you're aiming. Actually, there is a little bit of oscillation when aiming. The archer sees the target in the middle of the sight, but slightly blurred. You can understand why. Because the eye cannot accommodate and see uh, both the sight and the target over there. Uh, net, it's, it's, it's a little bit blurred, so this is uh, a little bit um, difficult, but uh, in time they uh, come to a, um, a familiarization that as a whole body mind, the bow and arrow and the target becomes the whole. It's, they call it wholeness, if technically correct. Um, the, the next step is to release the arrow. There is a little clicker here, so this clicker um, uh, is important in terms of deciding when to release the arrow. Um, when you draw the arrow backwards, uh, the string, the clicker drops from the tip of the arrow 
This means that it's time to release the arrow. In other words, this is the right draw length. So let's have a look at this. Here the clicker is dropping and releasing the arrow simultaneously. So can we uh, show the technique a little bit? This is the shooting cycle. So when you're showing, I'm going to explain it. So this is the shooting cycle. Yes. Um, the shooting cycle is, uh, uh, was introduced by Kisikli, the famous Korean um, uh, art course, well known. He's in the States now. A shot takes around 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, right after the draw, there is a moment called expansion. Expansion, this takes around two to four seconds, and during the expansion, you actually aim at the target. This is just before the release uh, of the arrow, and, uh, and the, the, the archer is focusing on the yellow uh, area, which is 70 uh, meters away. So literally, the archer is trying to lock on the yellow. This is a technical term, locking on the yellow. Uh, and we need to analyze this part of the draw. So this aiming behavior is important. I'm going to come to that later on. According to the literature, this is very important de uh, in determining uh, the, the success. Once you release the arrow, it takes only one second to hit the target uh, because the arrow speed is 240 kilometers. So it's, it takes only 1.5 uh, seconds. Okay, let's uh, do it, Ab Abdulaziz. So he's putting the um, uh, arrow on the string. There is a little notch here, so placing on the string, and putting the arrow on the um, uh, arrow shelf or arrow rest. And um, he's going to draw it. Uh, the weight of the uh, instrument, the bow, is 5.5 kilo for man and 4 kilo for woman. So from up, yeah, no, 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 he's not going to do it. There is, there is no arrow here. <laughs> okay, so you see he's looking through the side uh, and the forearm, the arrow, everything is online, should be. And there is a little bit of vibration. So this rod is actually dumping the vibration, it's the absorbing vibration and helping in aiming. Um, How much yeah. Can you tell? So this is probably 25, 27 kilograms. One draw force is 20. So in one competition, seven to two shots altogether, you can calculate. But uh, in a, a training, uh, an archer uh, approximately uh, shots 200, 250, 300, some uh, crazy Koreans are uh, shooting 400, 500 before the Olympic Games. So that means in a competition, 3.4, 4 tons altogether, cumulative, and in a uh, training, it is around uh, 5 uh, tons. One more time, then we can stop. So he is holding, uh, before the draw, he is lifting the uh, bow, then carrying the bow weight uh, along the upper extremity through the shoulder because uh, uh, he has to fix it first, then draw the string. Otherwise, the tremor starts. Thank you very much, Abdulaziz. Abdulaziz is the best uh, compound archer in Qatar. He is competing in international competitions. He is also uh, shooting with the recurve uh, sometime. Thank you very much. Um, any bodily movement, either in archery or any other sports, result in a change in center of uh, pressure. And I'm sure everybody uh, knows about, familiar about this uh, force place and uh, body sway. So one of the aim of an archer is to reduce the sway, come to a st stable uh, position as much as possible in order to, 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 to come to the stability as soon as possible to lock onto yellow. 
So um, this was one of our methods that we uh, uh, utilized uh, in assessing the body sway. So this is the, something I uh, mentioned a while ago. So number of shots per day, 200, 350. Average shots per week, 1,000, 1,500. Weekly training hours, 20, 25. And average training hours per year is 1,000. 1,200. It's really, really very heavy, demanding uh, uh, training regime. Another point. <coughs> um, it's not just bow and arrow and physique and strength, uh, but you need a psychology. And psychology probably is one of the most important part uh, in success in, in archery. So we, there is a target panic uh, issue. Everybody is trying to cope with this one in, in archery. Um, uh, you suppose you're getting prepared uh, for the very last arrow in the Olympic Games in the final match, face-to-face -face match, and this very last one uh, is going to determine the, uh, the result. So you are under very much stress, you are shaking, you are already fatigued, uh, yeah, and you need to control your body. So stress coping is very important in this situation. So this is just a short video about the biomechanics. I'm not going to go into details. This is showing the movements, how fine, how close to the center uh, uh, of pressure uh, uh, in order to reduce the sways. So these are basic biomechanics, uh, and almost all elite uh, archers in the world are going through all these uh, uh, experiments. So this is from the top, you see. So he's coming to a stable position, then release the arrow. Now, let's watch a very successful shot from 2012 London uh, Olympics during team matches. You see the parabola? and uh, the arrow hits just in the center. This is called 10x. It doesn't give extra points, but very discouraging for the opponent. Uh, did you realize the last frame? A target camera is placed in the center for TV coverage, and it is extremely difficult to shot, uh, shoot uh, the center intentionally, but this guy hits the camera, and of course, the camera is damaged. <laughs> After all these technical explanations, um, let's have a look at the factors uh, affecting archer performance. You can easily say that the archery is an instrument dependent sport. Yeah, but you need to have a look tech, high tech bow, also the arrows with a good spine. So this is showing how the, the arrow is traveling after the release, so it is undulating. There is a spine, the stiffness. So this stiffness is again an important factor. So everything is very fine, isn't it? S physiology, psychology um, is going to affect the, the success. Now, almost in every sport there are cheaters, and in archery is not immune uh, to this phenomenon. In every sport, some kind of pharmacologic substances are misused in order to enhance the performance. There were rumors uh, that archers use benzodiazepines to reduce the anxiety. This was a very serious issue because benzos uh, are not in the uh, banned list of uh, uh, sub uh, banned substances list in, in WADA uh, list. World Archer Medical Commission decided to check if benzos are really effective in archery performance uh, or not, because these uh, allegations were really very strong. So we submitted a research project to WADA, Scientific Commission, to run a study to see the effects of benzodiazepines, benzodiazepines on archers. And this uh, project was accepted and granted in 2008. Based on the performance factors and technique I mentioned previously, we designed this study. So uh, uh, we decided to um, analyze the aiming behavior at the target, body sway on force plate, 
the x and y axis, distance in terms of distance changes and the velocity of uh, changes, clicker reaction time to decide the release. This was this is uh, considered as, as an important factor and cognitive state anxiety um, um, items like um, somatic, cognitive, and self-confidence before uh, the competition. So this was the experimental setting. Uh, you see the force place, the infrared camera, and the, 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 there, there was a beamer uh, mounted on the bow. Um, uh, the infrared point was invisible, and only the infrared camera uh, was able to record the trace. And the, the travel along the target was then analyzed using a software. This is a very uh, laborious uh, work. So, uh, uh, before I forget, I have to mention that the study was carried out in an indoor facility in order to eliminate the external factors like wind, like uh, uh, light. Uh, so this provided a standard shooting environment. The distance was official uh, shooting distance, eight, uh, 18 meters. Um, for indoor archery competition. And uh, it was important to create or simulate uh, an official competition setting in order to produce a near real atmosphere for the archers. So it was decided to announce this study as a special event with award. We assume that the archers did their best during, the, let's say, the project competition. And the study design was randomized double blind, uh, blind uh, crossover. Now uh, you may wonder what the results are. So before the shooting and during the shooting, the, art, uh, the heart rates uh, didn't show any uh, difference. Actually, we didn't find any difference when uh, the archers uh, using benzodiazepines. So this was about the heart rates. So um, the next one was to assess the clicker reaction time, aiming behavior, traveling um, around the target, center of pressure changes in terms of velocity and the distance, and there was no difference, no change. And now uh, psychological test, <coughs> a very detailed um, um, uh, 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 the psychologist did uh, uh, after taking five milligram diazepam, and we didn't find any uh, difference uh, after using um, benzodiazepine. So was it? Um, I, now I can hear uh, your question: Why five milligram? Why not higher, or why not repetitive? We, we had a preliminary study, and we uh, realized that higher doses created a lethargy. So you wouldn't like uh, an archer to fall asleep just before the competition. So five milligrams was just enough to give a relaxation. Uh, uh, the lower doses didn't uh, do any effect. So five milligrams was decided uh, was the good one. So that's the reason single dose, five milligrams, and didn't uh, show any difference. What about the shooting scores? <coughs> Can you guess? Affected or not affected? Not affected. Can I see the votes or so almost all? Yes, correct. So benzodiazepines didn't affect the shooting scores. So uh, this um, um, uh, was actually uh, busted. <laughs> Um, diazepam doesn't affect shooting score uh, in uh, archery. And this study was published in 2015, and WADA did remove the substance from the monitoring list. Now, in the meantime, the story didn't finish here. There appeared another challenging issue. Very recently, some international sports federations removed beta blockers from their banned substances list, claiming that beta blockers are not effective in, in, our, uh, in their sport disciplines, but without any research. For about 30 years, beta blockers were on the list of banned substances for certain sports, including sailing, curling, wrestling, biathlon, modern pentathlon. So the water decided to remove, uh, based on the uh, information coming from the International Federation, 
But archery and shooting uh, 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 ask to keep uh, the, the, the better blockers, blockers in the list. You may wonder how that has emerged. The very first beta blocker study on the effect of shooting performance was carried on pistol shooters in 1977. Shooting performance was found to be uh, improved with beta blockers, but please note that this was on um, pistol shooters 1977. And the next study, the second study, and none uh, afterwards, was done in 1986, and again on pistol shooters. The research group has found a positive effect, effect by 13.4. This is very high, of, of course. Uh, Archer was um, uh, taught uh, uh, to be a fine motor tuning sport discipline like shooting and uh, beta blockers was, bon uh, was, was um, banned um, to be used uh, by, ar uh, by archers. So based on these studies, it was taken for granted. And um, WADA asked us if we're going to remove uh, beta blockers from the list or not. Then we decided to utilize the same setting for beta blockers this time. And we applied uh, for a grant, and uh, uh, this study, the project was granted. But this time, there was a second generation uh, beta blockers, not the first generation, only, even third generation. But third generation is not actually related uh, to uh, archery, so we uh, excluded this group. And uh, many people in archery, maybe uh, uh, over mid-age, and still competing at a high level in international competition. So this, this was always a burden in archery to decide after a TUE submission. So uh, the doctors are prescribing uh, beta blockers for a heart problem. Uh, uh, then um, uh, if it is banned in competition and out of competition in archery, it, you are in trouble in deciding about this. Yeah, you need to be fair to, uh, to decide. <coughs> I went to decide. So upon all these incidents and issues, uh, we started uh, the project uh, utilizing the same setting, but this time we had four trials for each archers uh, because we had uh, uh, selective beta blockers, non-selective beta blockers, placebo, and uh, control. We st uh, st uh, started asking ourselves, why would that be? <coughs> Probably. Uh, archers have their own unique aiming patterns, actually shown in many studies uh, in, in sports sciences, not related to these uh, uh, substances, but there are a lot of studies uh, analyzing the shooting aiming behavior, showing that every single archer has his, her own unique aiming pattern, not affected by distracting or disturbing conditions. So, archery and pistol shooting uh, are incomparable. Uh, so the decision taken long time ago was probably wrong. Now it is time to um, escalate this issue to the attention of uh, World Anti-Doping Agency. If uh, we publish and accept that this uh, paper, um, probably we can convince uh, the scientific commission um, that uh, we can remove um, the, the substances, the, the beta blockers from, uh, from the banned list. So these two projects took 10 years. 30 uh, research staff took part. Um, uh, uh, 40 archers participated as volunteers. And the total budget was only 70,000 uh, US dollars. Before I finish, I've, uh, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues and friends here from Ankara University, Hacettepe University. Ankara University sports medicine contributed in terms of medical aspects, and the Hacettepe contributed uh, 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 with the sports science uh, facilities. In this long run, um, 
we lost one of our best uh, international researcher and friend, Dr. Marcello Faina from uh, Italian Olympic Committee, who was the director of Italian uh, National Olympic Committee Medical Center. He passed away in uh, 2012. I bow uh, in his uh, memory. Dr. Antonio Pelliccia was also one of our international uh, collaborators. <coughs> And uh, this is the end of my presentation, and uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much.